A wobbly vice is like a paper straw, because, well, they both suck. And that's where this early 1900s Peter Wright post vice comes in. Post vice, or blacksmith vice, is built to take a beating and be as solid as possible. They're built in a way that transfers all the force from the jaws down through the leg and into the ground. This vise hasn't been used in who knows how long, and it's quite rusty. When I'm done with it, it'll be a functional tool put back to use a hundred years after it was made. This post vise has 5 inch jaws and is 70 pounds. First I need to remove all the rust from the vise, but to do that I need to disassemble it. So I took off the mounting assembly. Then I moved on to removing the movable jaw. if this nut has ever been taken off, but surprisingly, it actually can come off, or not. I found this vise on Facebook Marketplace. The pictures weren't amazing, and the description said it was made in Canada and had four and a half inch jaws. Funny go. thing is, when I went to pick it up, the first thing I noticed was that made an England stamp and later I checked the jaw size and it's actually 5 inches. With it disassembled, I took a cupped wire wheel on my angle grinder and started to remove the rust. All the rust is basically just on the surface. This is likely because the person I bought it from just stored it in their shop. This means that all the markings and stamps are still visible. So I got all these parts cleaned off, all the markings and stamps and stuff got cleaned up, that's pretty cool. There's the Peter Wright stamp, and then the patent solid box, and then there's also on this piece stamp for RC. Oh, there's stuff in there. Oh, grease. And it's also on this piece right there. I have no idea what that stands for. And there's also this piece. There's the uh, Made in England. All the stamps came out really nice, actually. It looks pretty cool. At some point in this vice's life, someone really put their weight into tightening it and bent the handle. So I decided I would try and unbend it cold at the anvil, which didn't end very well. No. No. It's cracking. It literally started cracking. But I welded it back together and could blend it in with the rest of the handles and grinding and wire wheeling. Next, I needed to forge a new wedge. This was missing from the vise, but is very much needed. This is what tightens the spring and locks the mounting plate into place on the vise.
With all my parts ready, I can start putting it back together. Starting with the movable jaw, I put it into position so that I can get my bolt in. Then I could tackle the spring. I put my spring in first and then the mounting bracket over top of that. I had some troubles with getting my spring flat so that my keyed wedge could fit, but using a couple clamps solved that problem. Then I put in the keyed wedge and followed it with the wedge that I made earlier. I probably could have made the wedge smaller, but it works and that's what matters. There we go. Next, I slid the solid screw box in and got the thrust washer put onto the spindle. Then I could screw it together and fully close it for the first time after taking it all apart. With the vise pretty much ready to go, I moved on to the stand. For the main mounting platform, I'm using this thick C-channel. I quickly got it cut before day one was over. Next day, I started cutting some more parts for the stand. Then I could start welding the legs onto the mounting plate. The side legs I'm mounting at about 12 degrees from vertical, and the back leg is about 15 degrees. After a bunch of welding, I could turn it right side up, but it's not finished quite yet. First, I need to add some caps for the feet. The front two legs are getting a piece of angle iron to span between them. This will also eventually support the leg of the vise. The back leg is just getting a small piece of flat bar, 
got pretty hot while welding it on. that, all the stand needed was some mounting holes. I got all my bolts temporarily put into place while I got the leg properly supported. I had to do this because I didn't make the legs of the stand the exact right height. But this was on purpose because it seemed like it would be a lot easier to do it this way. Then I could tighten everything down, put a coat of linseed oil on it, and do a bit of staring. and try to convince myself that it isn't that wobbly. It does. Like right now it's wobbling a bit, but I think once I set it up proper, it won't. Ignoring that, I went ahead and started digging a hole where I could bury the bottom couple inches of the vise. I put the vise in it and buried it so that I could do a couple tests. I'm not even going to show how it did with the heavier tasks, but the smaller things it actually did work great. I would have inlaid this with gold, but I think you already get the idea. Even though I was still trying to tell myself it would be fine, and it was better than my previous vice, but really, it was just like using a licorice as a straw. It might work better and look pretty sweet, but its functionality still kind of sucks. Then I got 200 pounds of concrete and mixed it up in a wheelbarrow with the right amount of water. Off camera I made a form out of some scrap 2x4s and plywood. When I filled up my form halfway, I put in some rebar then kept going. I used a hammer to vibrate the concrete to help everything settle and fill any voids. It's also smoothed it out a bit. I had made some anchor bolts from some 3 8 threaded rod and put them in. 
I took my time to make sure that these were in exactly the right spot. Then I let it sit. After a day and a half, I got back to it. I'm putting a wood spacer between the concrete and the stand. I marked the holes for this by hitting the wood onto the tops of the mounting holes. Hopefully this will help with some sound dampening and keeping the concrete from chipping. Then I can take off the form. I started digging another hole. I dragged the block into the hole and had to do a bit of tweaking to get it level. Then I could put the stand on and bolt it down. Now I don't have to try and convince myself that this is solid, because now it actually is. I put the vise on for the last time and got all the bolts tightened up. And it's definitely solid. I filled in the rest of the hole and all it really needs now is a proper test. But first, let's stare at it a little bit more. Some might say this is like a metal straw, superior to paper in every way, and strong enough to reuse it. Or maybe it's just like a solid metal bar, because this doesn't suck. We already know that it works for engraving. But it can also help file, upset, break, bend, hold, cut, twist, engrave, oh wait. This is Brant Build Stuff, thanks for watching, see you next time.